Hey guys, my name is Jennifer Almaguer and I love to spread the good news. And today, you know, I hope you guys don't mind the hat. I was just at the beach doing my 100 burpees for the month of November, every single day, 100 burpees a day. I started at the end of November um, and I will see what December's challenge is, but man, let me tell you, those are tough. When you're trying to come up, that's where it hurts, like your chest hurts and everything. And uh, you know, I, I decided to get back into my health and fit, fitness and wellness because without it, I notice that I tend to go downhill and I'm not at my best. Like my, my, my eating habits um, kind of, they start to dwindle, like they, they don't, they're not as strong or as good or as healthy. I'll start to crave the sugars because, man, let me tell you, there's so much, there's so much hidden sugars in our foods. Did you know there's about 72 chemicals that are sugar that are so hard to read in our ingredients? It doesn't even say sugar in our ingredients. It says something else. This is how tricky society is or the FDA is. And I'm not here dog on or talk bad about the FDA. I'm here to shed light and to bring awareness and to bring knowledge because knowledge is power. The more you know, the better your life is going to be because you will be able to make smarter decisions and you cannot be deceived. So there's so many hidden sugars. And if you go to the grocery store, just pick up a, a popular item from Dunkin Donuts or, you know, one of these chains and you will notice that it says proprietary blend. What is that? That means it's a secret concoction that cannot be shared with the public. Well, they could put anything in the proprietary blend. It doesn't mean that it's good for your body. It means I'm going to get you addicted. I'm going to get you hooked. If you guys watch the movie with Michael Keaton, it's, uh, I don't remember the name of it. A really great movie based on a true story. And it's how McDonald's got started. And it got started based on this formula that keeps people addicted to going back, needing more. And if I don't watch my health, I will not realize how much sugar I'm actually consuming. And then my body wants even more sugar. So I started, you know, having this conversation with Christ, because you guys know I'm always talking to Christ and I was like, why does, you know, I, I understand, like I can feel the effects of when I don't take care of my body, but what is it that you have to say about it? And it is so important to God that we take care of our bodies. In the Bible, he explains what it means to take care of your body, how to actually take care of your body, and why we should take care of our bodies. So let's dive right in. And these will be all Bible verses and I'm so glad to have brought the Bible here on this trip with me because it really feeds my soul. It is the most nourishing food for my soul. So uh, in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, it says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. So what is our body? Our body is the temple where the Holy Spirit chills and hangs out and talks to us and directs our path. Don't you want the best temple for the creator of the universe to have that much respect for God? You know, it's easy to have not have respect for ourselves when we're struggling. A lot of times, you know, we can fall in the trap of low self-worth, low self-esteem, so you lack respect for yourself. But to show other people respect sometimes is easier. So having respect for God and cr taking care of your temple, your body for the Holy Spirit, that's pretty cool. And I highly recommend it. You know, if you don't have respect for yourself, at least have respect for God. And in Proverbs 4, 20, it says, My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. 
Do not let them out of your sight. What, are, what is his words? His word is all the scriptures in the Bible. Don't turn away from the word. Pay attention. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them in your heart. For they are life for those who find them and health to one's whole body. Oh yes, because what we feed our mind, feeds our emotions, feeds our actions. And I will go further into that. And this is how God tells us how to take care of our bodies. He says in Matthew 22, 37, it says, you must love the Lord with all of your heart, your soul, and all of your mind. So what is even your heart? Your heart is your emotions, your contrite heart. And your soul is the combination of your mind and your heart. Your mind, all of your mind, all of your thoughts, all of your ideas, you must love God. You must respect God with all of your mind, all of your thoughts, all of your heart. And so your soul is a combination of your emotional intelligence and your mental intelligence, your intellect. So, uh, what affects your thoughts and your emotions has a lot to do with your body. It's all connected. It's a big loop. So if you don't know where to start, start at your body. And your body will, like I said, affect your emotions, your thoughts, and your feelings. And it will have a direct correlation to what actions you take. Uh, so I'm going to move on to... Proverbs 3, 7, 8. This is how to do this, how to take care of ourselves. Do not be wise in your own eyes. For the Lord, fear the Lord. It's the same as loving the Lord. Have a lot of respect for the Lord. Don't dis dismiss God. Don't disregard God because God is very powerful and he can be very a jealous God, an angry God, because he's a God of justice. So fear the Lord, love the Lord, respect the Lord. Fear the Lord and shun evil. What is evil? The evil thoughts, the negative thoughts, the low self-esteem, the negative thinking. That doesn't come from God. God wouldn't allow anything negative in your mind and in your heart. So that is evil. And he tells us you need to shun that, get rid of that. That serves you nothing. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. So if you love God, you fear God, and you shun evil, this is going to bring nourishment to your body. Then I was asking, well, why, why is this even important? I mean, I can, you know, somewhat lukewarmish kind of like correlate the why, right? Because I'm supposed to love myself, but it's deeper than that. In Acts 17, 28, it says, For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. We are his children. We are from God. This is why it's important. Another reason why it's important is in 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen people. Okay. You know what? Here's the thing. When you uh, understand who you really are and who God says you are, you understand that you are his princess. You will understand that you are his prince. And he wants nothing but the best for you. He, Of course he wants you to win and to feel rich and wealthy and loved and cared for. And he doesn't want, he tells us, get rid of evil. I don't want that for you. Why? Because I love you so much. Get rid of that trash. You, you deserve better. Why? Because here in 1 Peter 2, 9, he says, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. He pulled you out of the trenches. If you're here on my channel, you are wanting to sharpen yourself because Sharp, iron sharpens iron and that's what I'm all about and uh, we're also supposed to help each other out encourage each other that's what he calls us to do and you know like when I read that we are his royal priesthood it's like 
I started thinking, do I treat myself like royalty or do I sell myself short? Do I allow people to mistreat me? Am I a people pleaser? Am I afraid of other people? Am I more afraid of what other people think about me than what I think what God thinks about me? Because God says I'm royalty. And if I'm allowing to be mistreated, then that means that I don't believe God. I'm not walking in alignment with God. I'm actually believing what the evil is telling me. And I'm disobeying God by not shunning evil, but by biting and taking the bait. Another reason why this is important, that we must take care of our bodies. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, We are Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. So we are the image of Christ. You think Christ, if he was walking on earth nowadays, he would be eating all the processed junk food filled with high corn fructose, corn syrup. I don't know if I just said that right or not, but... Uh, do you think he'd be eating at McDonald's all the time and uh, eating ramen noodles, which is extremely unhealthy for you? And, you know, like, I know some people can't afford to have the good food. And this is why we ought to be so grateful that if you have the opportunity to buy yourself fresh fruits and vegetables that were created by God, grown by the sun and rain who God created the sun and the rain it's all energy it's grown by energy and we're putting energy into our body it's the positive ions and it, it's going to make us feel alive and if we're eating all the junk food processed food re refined sugars we're putting negative ions into our body and one thing that you know like that I learned about you know, like, and I'm not here to talk mess about about the FDA and the government. I'm here to shed light. I'm here to bring knowledge because knowledge is power. The more you know, the better decisions you're going to be able to make. The better decisions right here, your thoughts. And it's going to affect how you feel and the actions that you take. Uh, so I feel that the world has money up on a pedestal and it is so many people's God and that's how I see the food industry the fast food industry they don't have your best interest at heart they have their pockets as their best interest at heart why do you think they put all of these addictive chemicals go google this find out how many uh, sugars exist how many chemically created sugars there are and when you look behind the label of certain foods you won't see sugar it actually says zero sugar but then there's this really long strange word that you won't even know how to pronounce but it is a chemically created sugar but they will not tell you sugar it's all deception and it's all to put money in their pockets and it's all like a loop to create to keep you sick because if you are kept sick, then that means you are running to the doctor. And the doctor, uh, here, here, here's how to tell the difference if you are dealing with, uh, let's say you go to a doctor and you have you know, depression, anxiety, insomnia, uh, you, you don't have like, you're chronic, in chronic pain, you have no energy, and he, if he prescribes you something right away, you're dealing with the drug dealer because if he's not asking you, how many hours of sleep are you getting? What are the type of foods that you're eating? Are you getting any exercise? Let's start there. If a doctor doesn't start there, you are dealing with a drug dealer who's in the loop with the pharmaceutical companies making money off of your sickness. So I felt that this was important to say, to share. Un momento.
Okay, um, I gotta go. Uh, my kids are calling me, but um, this was the message for today that, you know, I, I really uh, am happy to get back into my health and wellness and fitness and nutrition and watching how much I sleep. And, you know, it's a common misconception that the more you work out, the more you're gonna lose weight, but really working out only builds your muscle. And what you eat has a direct correlation to how much weight you lose. So if you wanna lose weight, you gotta start watching what you eat and start uh, reading uh, like the nutritional labels just for fun, do it for fun. Don't do it out of stress, don't do it out of deprivation or anything like that, but do it for knowledge and to see what you're actually eating. This is the last thing I'm gonna say. So, uh, well, the second to last. If you have not followed my channel, I do invite you to do so if you feel like it and share this video with someone that you think could benefit from it. Um, but so I used to be a, a teacher, right? And an elementary school teacher, and uh, this was actually in, in Sunday school, but you know, I've, been, I've dealt with kids for many years. So there was a kid that I was taking care of and uh, teaching and she had a learning disability. She couldn't uh, connect the dots. Like literally she could not connect the dots. On a piece of paper, I would like uh, do little dots of shapes, like a circle and all she had to do was connect the dots. And I did this with shapes and her name. And she could never do it. Like her brain, instead of doing a circle, would just like do lines and squiggles. And I was like, I don't, understand how her mind can't connect a dot to another dot like how is it that her hand and her with the pen and paper and her like i just don't get it i don't get how that's not possible for her but it's a learning disability and i thought well you know it is what it is and just love her and take care of her and continue to try to work with her the best you can and then I don't see her for a few months and she comes back into my classroom and she's able to connect all the dots. This was like literally only a few months later, no more than fun, four months later, she's able to connect all the dots. She's able to trace her name. When her mom picks her up, I said, what happened? Your daughter, she's, she's able to do all of, my, all of the homework, all of the tasks that I give her. What, what happened? She said, I changed her nutrition. I got her off the high sugar juices. I got her off all the junk food and I started feeding her fresh fruits and vegetables. I completely changed her diet. And let me tell you, it made a world of a difference. And I said, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I am witness to that. And that I will never forget. I will never forget that. And so whenever I start to feel depressed, lonely, sad, unmotivated, lazy. I start to pay attention. Well, what are you eating, Jen? And I realized that I'm starting to eat more sugars. And when I discovered that there's a lot of foods with hidden sugars, guys, look this up. It's crazy how much sugar is in our food, in bread, in uh, even like the healthy stuff that appears to be healthy, but it's all deception. It's to keep you hooked. That's how they make their money. That's how they keep you going back to the grocery store, buying the same products because your body craves it. It wants it. Okay. I hope this video served you guys. And, um, I challenge you to do a hundred burpees every single day this morning. I did not feel like it. And I said, this is the sacrifice that I'm willing to make. And uh, I said, just get it done, just get it done, get it over with. And I never regret it. I always regret not doing it. I never really want to do it, but man, I never regret once I do it. I hope this video served you and I will see you guys on the next one. Adios.